Welcome, Managing Director. Thanks for joining us. Wanted to first ask about the G20 video chat that you had last night. What was your message to world leaders? That we need to uh, mobilize uh, uh, the whole world uh, to step up action on containing the virus and also protecting the economies and uh, pay close attention to emerging markets and developing countries that are going to be very, very hard hit. Uh, we have an institution, the IMF, that is created for these moments of crisis. We are $1 trillion strong, uh, thanks to our shareholders, including the U.S., that, include, that put our NAP, the uh, capacity to increase our uh, fighting uh, mm -hmm. uh, the crisis uh, in the uh, uh, bill that went to, to Congress, for which we are very uh, grateful. And uh, we are stepping up uh, enormously. We now have some 80 requests for emergency assistance. Never happened in the past, uh, uh, Sarah. Uh, at best, emergency as assistance would be a handful of countries. Uh, today, uh, practically the whole world is in uh, a status of emergency. So action I imagine together. Yeah. No, on that point, action together, it, it doesn't feel, Managing Director, particularly coordinated right now. Every country sort of going on its own in terms of the strategy, uh, particularly on the health side. What's the risk of doing that? Well, the risk of doing that is uh, uh, we would be less uh, uh, effective. And in that sense, the G20 call uh, yesterday was very helpful because it did bring the leaders of uh, the uh, 20 largest economy, 85% of the uh, uh, world economy, uh, together. And number one uh, topic on their agenda was coordinating uh, health response. Uh, we from the IMF are doing our part. We just launched yesterday Actions Tracker for 186 countries on the uh, site of uh, monetary and fiscal measures. Uh, and we are very, working very closely with WHO, the World Bank and other institutions to make sure that we bring aggregate financing, aggregate demand to be able to raise rapidly production capacity uh, in countries where this is, this is possible. So yes, this crisis mm -hmm. hit countries like falling like domino, one after another, and until it is your turn, you actually think that maybe you can you can escape, uh, and that led to uh, somewhat slower stepping up coordination, but I'm very encouraged by what I see uh, now. I see much clearer understanding that if we don't beat it everywhere, we won't be able to get out of it. And as you know, uh, Sarah, we have uh, 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 stated that the world is now in recession and that the length and depth of this recession depends on these two things, containing the, the virus and having effective coordinated response uh, to the crisis. There, there's a live debate about that, Managing Director, in this country and, and I'm sure leaders around the world, and that is we don't want the cure to be worse than the disease. It's something President Trump has tweeted. It, it's something... That, that's up for debate. I mean, the, the economic fallout, the sudden stop of the economy and, and the cost socially for public health, uh, for economics that that is going to bring could be very intense. How do you think about the trade-off of stopping your economy well, here we, to, we, to get the containment of the disease? We actually uh, strongly believe that taking aggressive actions on containment is a prerequisite for strong recovery. And in our uh, scenarios for, for this year, and especially for next, for 2021, uh, the key determinant on whether we can have a sizable rebound is whether containment measures are applied 
effectively and whether then they are followed or actually simultaneously whether there is a very strong set of monetary and fiscal measures. And what we see around the world is an incredible mobilization of monetary and fiscal measures. Uh, never ever seen uh, the uh, uh, global financial uh, crisis uh, with the 2% uh, fiscal measures at that time looks like relatively easy a fight that had to be uh, uh, fought. Now we are seeing countries one after another coming up with uh, 3%, 4%. Uh, the uh, G20 announced uh, that collectively they have deployed uh, some $5 trillion of fiscal stimulus and guarantees. This is over 6% of global GDP. Uh, and, I, and I can tell you that uh, 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 getting those Two things, the uh, uh, fight of the health crisis and then measures to, to buffer the impact on the economy so it can restart, they got, go uh, hand in hand. There is well, no way, there is no way to, to come to a strong recovery without strong containment. Absolutely. And in this country, we saw the fiscal stimulus made, make its way through Washington this week, $2 trillion dollars. Is that going to be enough for the U.S.? <laughs> Everybody is asking this question. Uh, we, we will have to really see how the crisis evolves, but two trillion is a very potent uh, weapon. And don't forget it comes to, uh, on the back of very strong uh, measures taken by the, uh, by the Fed. Uh, Chairman Powell has been very aggressive uh, to, to provide liquidity. Uh, on the $2 trillion, what we like about the uh, package uh, is that uh, uh, measures are really targeted in a smart way. One, a lot for the health system, $117 billion for hospitals. Two, protecting workers, protecting the American families, the uh, 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 injection of cash in the hands of people for two months very important. Three, protecting the companies, both large companies, but especially medium-sized uh, small companies, and doing so by providing an incentive to companies to keep their workers on the payroll. And I can tell you, the more we do to keep the companies from bankruptcy and keep workers not out and detached the more we do that, the better off we are for the recovery. And of course, there is a lot that can be said uh, uh, on how this is going to also buffer the, uh, the financial system. Uh, that kind of measures we see a lot around the world. And I, I can tell you, we are very, uh, mm. very gratified. We have been advocating uh, for this. Go big, go big and target it. And we see that happening. Now, would it be enough? Uh, we will have to see how the uh, containment efforts uh, uh, work. Uh, I, I choose to be uh, uh, optimist on the basis of what we have seen in China. Uh, very strong mm -hmm. containment. First quarter of the economy really tanked, but now the uh, production is coming uh, up, to, uh, up to par, and China is actually uh, turning into a source of medical equipment for the rest of the world on the back of what uh, they have experienced in this uh, crisis. In the meantime, we've seen extremely volatile markets, mm -hmm. default risk. Wondering what your take is here as companies have loaded up on debt and now sovereigns, the countries, are loading up on even more debt. Is there a reckoning we, we, coming, and, and what does that look like? We, we, do, we do worry about that. Uh, I mean, we, the IMF has been saying um, time and again, when you are in a good place, build your buffers. Now what we see is that uh, both countries and companies that have done it are better positioned to with, withstand this uh, crisis. Uh, we are working on the, on the side of countries uh, together with the World Bank, uh, we have been uh, calling for uh, moratorium on debt service for low-income countries, especially those in high debt uh, distress, until we can sort out what their position is 
So there is no disorderly default that we can, we can actually, in an orderly manner, uh, deal with this uh, that uh, problem. On the side of, on the side of uh, companies, uh, frankly, they do need the help right now. If, if they don't get this help, mm -hmm. I worry very much about bankruptcies, lay, layoffs that would make the recovery harder, but also they can erode the fabric of our uh, society. Now, are we going to be dealing with this uh, problem in the future? Yes, but interest rates are remarkably low. And uh, we are seeing them staying low for quite some time. So we would have space to deal with the problem of debt in the future, but we should not go drip, 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 drip with small measures now when we know it is a gigantic crisis. We have never had the world economy standing still. Um, now it does. How we go, how we go about revitalizing it uh, is another uh, important topic. And at the fund, we are, we are investing a lot of time thinking about, uh, about it, about the recovery that will come. It, how, how quickly can it come? Can it be a light switch that's just turned on? Well, it, I, I am afraid it's not going to be like a light switch uh, because uh, remember my analogy with the domino falling? Countries have been falling because of this crisis or in the hands of this crisis after one, after another, after another, after another. So that chain means also that the recovery is going to be in some sequence. Uh, getting the whole world to work again is not going to be a simple and, uh, uh, you know, light uh, switching uh, proposition. But countries that are serious about their containment measures and are serious about their, especially their targeted fiscal uh, stimulus, they're likely to move faster on this, towards this uh, uh, road uh, to recovery. Uh, and I do really uh, uh, hope that the U.S. is going to be one of these countries for the sake of the American people, for the sake of, of my staff, we work uh, and live here in the United States, but also mm -hmm. for the sake of the rest of the world. The U.S. is so important, the largest economy, uh, that what happens here resonates uh, uh, elsewhere. So the U.S. recovering uh, uh, more rapidly can pull uh, the world economy on the recovery uh, uh, path.